Our first talk, we have, we have two in this session. The first one is a first year Korean OER project called You Speak Korean, one and two. And our presenters come from several universities. As I was saying, this is a collaborative project. A1 Cho from Penn, Emily Curtis from Western Washington University, Mi Jung Kim from Washington, Wash U at St. Louis and Angela Lee Smith from Yale. So thank you for being here and we're ready to hear you tell us about You Speak Korean. Do you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay, and did you see my screen? All right. Uh, welcome to our You Speak Korean We Are project presentation. Um, I am so happy to share our uh, collaborative project today. Uh, my name is Hewon Cho, and then together with Emily Curtis, uh, we will briefly introduce our collaborative project uh, to develop an open resource on Korean language textbook and relevant materials on behalf of the author and presenter team. So first, um, Emily will introduce the You Speak Korean series and how this project was coined in this new normal era. Emily? Okay, great. I, I'm probably preaching to the choir, but um, just some points on the new normal era. One of the first hits I get online uh, for an uh, internet search on new normal is this 2020 article from the UN stating that the new normal is digital. So we know that um, and suggesting that because most education is now forced online by the pandemic. Well, that's maybe old news, but anyway, this is suggesting that world language education's new normal is also digital, it's online, and maybe we can add, at, at least eventually, it's gonna be open access. So um, some other bits and pieces that Wikipedia says that new normal uh, the term denotes a behavior or state that is atypical, but becomes baseline following a crisis. And the term has been used that way in uh, for decades in psychology. But for me, 2020 has taught me that a societal new normal does not need to have negative connotations, that we can embrace this new normal, digital new normal, even if it started as a coping mechanism, and that we can build something better as the new normal. And I personally have seen that digital online distance learning is better in some ways um, from having chat as a back channel during a Zoom class to integrating online videos and memes. And hey, how about online textbooks? Um, in fact, the, the term new normal, the digital revolution, OER, none of these are new because of the, the pandemic, they've been around. We all know that generation, old, the older generation has been complaining about TV viewing and video gaming for, for decades. And, you know, that screen age became this digital age. And now really around the world, most people have a cell phone and are connected through cell phones. And youth culture is, is so shaped by things that are reliant on the internet, that functions on the internet. So we are thoroughly in, engulfed in a digital era and where we do everything online. And so really the new generations of our students are quite ready for online educational resources. Um, in terms of Jedi, uh, still back one, in terms of Jedi, uh, justice, equity, diversity, and uh, inclusion, as long as we can ensure internet access, then this distance learning that we've been practicing, making use of online educational resources, is making education accessible to more people, more diverse student bodies who don't need to arrange childcare or find transportation or make living arrangements near a school. Um, online materials can be more inclusive of diverse populations who are participating in conversations online. You can integrate those and open access materials. Uh, sorry, online materials are going to be less expensive than hard copy textbooks. And when we make those open access, then there's no cost burden at all. So OER is going to help us reach um, the Jedi goals as well. And the last point I'll make is just how much more practical it is to have um, educational materials online 
<clears throat> that these digital online materials, they're allowing flexibility and responsiveness that print materials never could. New editions of textbooks took years to come out, took a lot of work and a lot of um, environmental resources as well. And then there was a cost to the students. And so when we put it online, uh, this is really relevant for language teaching because language changes really quickly, really quickly with along with internet communications. It changes really quickly and we need our world language textbooks to be very responsive to that language change and the societal realities that are that it's reflecting. So we have to be able to to edit and update our, our online materials really quickly and online materials, digital materials allow us to do that. So um, with those my ideas in mind, we got really excited to add our You Speak Korean series to the available OER resources that are out there. So um, Suhi Kim and Hyeon Cho and I met in graduate school and we came together and wrote and then released our first You Speak Korean book in 2002. At that time, there were not many Korean language programs that made a distinction between heritage learners and novice learners with no background in the language. Uh, and there weren't really materials for those novice learners either. So we wanted to create textbooks that would be very, very thorough, assuming no background and provide step-by-step -step learning and also integrate active learning strategies that were employed in many other world languages. So we wanted really updated Korean language materials. So we wrote and self-published our full color textbook series, self-published, and they were very well received and quite successful for our student learning. Um, but it was tricky being self-published and we and we had students and colleagues as well that really wanted our, them to reach a wider audience. And that, you know, then came the Korean wave and K-pop fandom and just explosions of interest in the Korean language alongside explosion in social media use, online everything and in OER. And I think this was all pretty unhindered, if not unleashed during the pandemic, that we need all of those things online. So the time was absolutely ripe, if not overripe, for you speak to Korean to go online. And dear colleague Hewan Cho spearheaded this project that she will now explain. All right, thank you, Emily. So as Emily spoke, um, this second edition is um, being written for a while and we wanted to make the second edition more accessible and then um, by the both language educators and then students. So um, we'll just say that the biggest motivation comes from the fact we wanted to reach out more people um, and then uh, who want to um, study or teach the Korean language. Uh, in the classroom setting or on their own. So let me um, briefly show that the, um, it consists of two um, parts. First one is a textbook and second one is a set of practice material. And each book consists of uh, 12 chapters um, by incorporating topics that are highly relevant to our Gen Z learners. And then this, um, the book one manuscript is complete and then is currently um, converted to an OER platform right now. So I will um, briefly guide you through the book. So first one is like a, we uh, begins with the um, those uh, lesson focus, and then each chapter begins with this lesson focus and warm up activity with a discussion point and a short model dialogue. And then uh, it moves to the vocabulary section that comes with a Quizlet link. So students can visit the Quizlet site to listen to the audio and practice using classic cards and play games. And students can also take the test after practice. I think this is the beauty of the OER platform that you can incorporate those uh, readily available resources as a part of a student's practice. And then pronunciation guides, vocabulary note, and then uh, and vocabulary exercises come with the um, vocabulary list. Next one is a recipe. That means like uh, this section offers a key grammar uh, structures and expressions along with the, these exercises. 
who develop students' communicative competence using the given structure. Next one is the let's cook. This is a very, really interesting section that are classroom tasks, but they can be also used as an asynchronous task to um, give students uh, the opportunity to practice and integrate all the modules they have learned so far. And then it consists with those uh, um, interpretive, interpersonal and presentational mode of communication task. And each task can be used for a formative and summative assessments. So here's the example. So listening or market speaking, also it also has some presentation as part. Then students are um, guided to um, the Korean flavors where we um, the present language points and cultural notes and then students can um, have the opportunity to deepen and expand their understanding of the Korean language and culture. So another, um, the advantage of it is um, OER platform. For example, um, here, students can just click on the find more country names in Korean and they'll be guided to the Google Korean site and then read all those country names in Korean. So we can put a lot of links there and then they'll be guided to the um, uh, online resources. Finally, students have uh, the opportunity to um, practice on their own and then also engage in, the, in these um, integrative performance tasks. The left side, you will see that the, the traditional workbook format, but on the right side, students have the, these different interactional and then also um, set of practice tasks that um, they can work on and produce the um, language in an authentic context. So how to apply those materials on, um, online to the classroom setting. So this is the, the uh, snapshot of the lesson plan that I have. So students start from the, this, uh, um, uh, the students read the chapter and then learn the practice new um, vocabulary using Quizlet and watch lesson videos and complete the short quiz before coming to a, a sync the synchronous meeting on Tuesday. And then those are the classroom materials that come from, mostly come from the OER the materials that we have. And then our students review, reinforce and further extend uh, what they have learned by engaging in this integrative um, tasks. So that's an example of the, some of the materials here. And more importantly, this um, it certainly takes a village to develop and build this YSK OER site. So I'm happy to report that this project is a collaborative effort from these wonderful language educators who teach Korean and linguistics in community schools, private colleges, and public universities. And then I also uh, would like to thank our dedicated student workers who created all these wonderful artwork and put materials together to the uh, website. And then um, this, we have um, received a small grants, um, but without those grants, you would not have been able to put up this much materials on the website. Um, and then I also thank um, our librarian, our digital uh, scholarship librarian at Penn Library who uh, offered the Penn Press, uh, no, that the press book platform for this project. Uh, and then also currently this uh, YSK project, the um, textbooks are used um, at Penn and Boise State University. And then we have received extremely uh, positive feedback from our students. So future directions, we um, try to finish uh, converting the um, our new manuscript to the online format by the end of this year. Um, and then we would like to add more interactive practice materials if possible. Book three and book four, uh, we would like to continue on this um, very important and meaningful endeavor in the future. Uh, and we are still looking for the grants and the support. So that's what, all I have right now and then um, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks. 
Thank you. We have about one and a half minutes left for questions. It looks like there's one in the chat. Someone yeah, so how does one access the, this type of textbooks? Good question. So uh, we have um, contracted up to chapter seven and chapter three right now. And then we are we will gradually add more chapters. I think it takes the most time to finalize the format of the um, chapters on the OER platform right now. And then when, and then since we just finalized the format, then the, we will add more chapters later and make that available. Uh, maybe we'll send a link to the um, URL and then post that link to open the Corel website. So, so students are getting a link. Okay. Website. Yeah, so uh, once it's complete, we will um, make sure that it is um, visible, visible in the field. 